let's talk about how to write little apps for yourself that use LLMs under the hood. Uh, I'm going to give you one example that I recently wrote for myself. Uh, this is the app in question, uh, by the way. And what this little app does is it helps me maintain this little blog of mine. I have a YouTube channel where I review these ergonomic keyboards. And at some point, I didn't just want to have them on YouTube. I also wanted to have something written on my blog. But I didn't feel like writing all of that. And a very normal thing to do with LMs these days is to maybe take some content from YouTube and write a neat little summary. And since it's for my own blog, I figured that would be kind of a automate the boring stuff kind of a moment. That's not something I want to do by hand. I'm going to explain how this whole app works in just a moment, but I first just want to give a little demo of just how it works. So what I'm able to do here is I'm able to pass it the URL of a video of mine. That's the URL for this keyboard, by the way. Then I can hit submit, and then you can see that it's doing a few things. It's, it says it's downloading, then it says it's running Whisper. And you can also see that we're doing something with an LLM over here. And then it's done. I can scroll down and you can see that it has generated me a whole bunch of markdown. And there's also this little copy to clipboard button that I can go ahead and click. And this effectively is the summary of the video that I just uh, sent it. Now, what's really cool about this particular setup is I have a very pretty app in front of me over here that's very useful and very straight to the point. But what I can also still do is I can review the text that I'm seeing here. And if I ever spot a mistake, I'm always able to go back one step into the notebook that belongs with this. And I can then also change the prompt if need be. There's been a few times where I just really noticed it was off track and adapting the prompt is usually just adding a sentence or so. But having all of this in the same app, in the same environment, that has proven to be super duper useful. I can make a change quite easily. And there's none of that, oh, I have to change a file over here, then restart the app again, and then hopefully I can get the feedback. No, the only thing I really need to do here is update the prompt and all the things that ran before doing anything with the LLM, that's still in memory, that's all totally fine. It's just that one change to the prompt that I can make and I can see the effect right away. And this is also a thing that I really like about Marimo. There's always this dual nature of a notebook in this particular case. I can definitely keep everything inside of a notebook, but if I wanted to, I can always take a step out also make a little bit of an app, which is especially useful for rapid prototyping. And then when I need to, I can always jump back in. So next up, let's talk about how all of this is implemented. But before showing you code, I think doing a little bit of whiteboarding might make some sense. Because there's a few steps. At the start of everything, there is a URL. And that's pointing to a video on YouTube. But then I also, and although what I could do is I could go ahead and grab the transcripts from that YouTube video, I've just noticed that the YouTube transcripts aren't that good. So it felt safer instead to first maybe download it. This will give me a, uh, a video locally. And then I can run this open source model called OpenAI Whisper. And that is going to give me a transcript locally. The thing that's really nice about choosing OpenAI here is that you can also pick the model that you're going to use. So you can go for a super high quality, but computationally expensive model. You can also go for something more lightweight, but there's also steps in between that you can pick from. And the main thing that I personally really like is that I don't have to rely on whatever Google is doing with their transcripts. It's just that I've noticed they're not necessarily that great all the time. Now, once I've got the transcripts into a bit of text here, this is where a LLM can kick in. From here, you can really go nuts. You can try out all sorts of LLMs that you like. For this exercise though, I went with Claude. It worked well enough and I had an API key already. But the whole point here is that Claude does need some sort of a prompt, and this will then give me some sort of a summary. The summary is great, but it's only going to be part of what I need for my blog. I also need to have a pretty title, and I also want to have an iframe that can render the video. So the summary is then, at the final end, used as input for a Jinja template. And then this will give me markdown that I can just uh, go ahead and copy. And this is also a good place to have a copy to clipboard button, uh, which I've also added to the uh, notebook. Because I'm using Marimo, note that one very convenient thing is that if I were ever to maybe change the prompt over here, that I don't have to worry about running this bit or this bit again. A Marimo notebook is aware of things that happened beforehand, so it's not like I'll be rerunning the entire script whenever I change a few things here and there. What's more, Whenever I make a change to the prompt, it's pretty easy to see the effect in this markdown file over here. And this gives me a nice little feedback cycle. I'm still a human in the loop after all. And if I see a mistake, I can very quickly fix it. So I hope that this little background helps paint the picture. Um, let's now just dive into the notebook and point out a few things that I think make it just a little bit nicer to work with. And here is the notebook. 
if you're interested in all the details, know that the show notes actually have a link to this notebook, so you can run this yourself locally as well. But the first thing I wanted to point out is that I've sprinkled these with mo.status.spinner context managers all across the code. You might remember when I started this notebook, when I gave it the URL, there was this little spinner icon, and this icon was an indication that it was performing a specific step. You can basically wrap code that is somewhat slow with these spinner context managers, and that's going to give feedback to the user. I really don't like staring at a blank screen. I really like that sign of life. So being able to add this here and there is definitely great. Now, in terms of the libraries that I'm using in this code block, by the way, there is this YouTube downloader library that seems to work quite well. But for a lot of my LLM workloads, I'm actually relying on this library called Instructor over here. And we'll get back to that in just a moment, because there's also this bit over here that I wanted to uh, point out. Uh, this is the Whisper library from OpenAI. In this particular case, I'm really just loading the base library. You can also go for a larger one. But also note here, I am wrapping this code that actually takes a while because it's going through the entire video and then generating the appropriate text for it that is computationally heavy. So that is also something that I'm wrapping with this uh, spinner status uh, little wheel widget. Again, because I really like to know what part of the program am I and what am I actually waiting for when I uh, give it a new URL. And then we get to the segment that actually generates the summary for me. Now, the summary that I'm interested in isn't just a bit of text. Like, I want a summary in text, but I think for my blog, it would also be kind of nice if I had a pros and cons list. And I would also like to have this one sentence that's kind of a TLDR. And it would also be nice if I can just explicitly get the keyboard name out from the transcripts themselves. And this is where there's this little library called Instructor that gives you just very neat features. And the way it works is you just make a Pydantic base model as you would normally, but the doc string that you add to that class, that is actually going to be part of the prompt sent to open AI or Claude or whatever LLM that you're interested in using. You can then also tell it what kind of outputs you expect. And you can actually use types for this. So I can say, hey, there's a little summary, but I also want to have a pros list and a cons list, and those have to be output as list of strings. Under the hood, Instructor can then take care of all the prompt engineering for you, or it can make sure that if you have an LLM that has proper support for parsing these functional features, then it can go ahead and use that as well. It depends a bit on what kind of LLM that you're using. Just in general, I have found that Instructor is pretty good at using some of the more cheaper open source models, as well as some of the more expensive hosted versions for you. The main thing that's just really neat is that this definition is something that is independent of the LLM that you are indeed using. Also note that whenever I find a mistake in my output, then this would also be the place where I tweak the prompt a little bit. And you can actually see that there's a couple of changes that I've already made. There's this one little bit over here where I'm saying that I shouldn't do more than four pros and four cons. I've noticed a few times that it ends up making these huge lists of all the positive aspects of a keyboard and all the negative aspects of it. A little sentence like this turns out to be uh, pretty good at preventing that behavior. And here's another thing that I noticed. Sometimes the name of the keyboard that was outputted didn't include the brand of the keyboard, and I do think the brand should be part of the keyboard name. So little tweaks like that. Like those are changes that I've definitely made uh, whenever I was looking at the output and I just noticed, hey, there's a few things that are just a bit off. But I also hope it's clear that it wasn't a whole lot of work. This is uh, maybe a paragraph of a prompt, only a few sentences. Okay, and then below over here, you should see a spinner, just like before. And you can also see that we have our YouTube output. There is a client that I constructed that connects to Anthropic, uh, I also have to give it the model. You can pick different model names from here, by the way, but Claude 3.5 Sonnet was fine. And from here, what you gotta do is you gotta specify what the conversation is with the agent so far. And at this point in time, it's really just a single user giving a prompt, but you can go and do some elaborate things here as well if you're doing something with multi-turn interactions, let's say. I'm not doing any of that, but one part of the prompt, quote unquote, that I wrote was to define this expectation of the output. And then there's also this little bit of prompt down below over here, where I can also add the title of the YouTube video as well as the text that came out of my LLM, as well as the text that came out of OpenAI Whisper. And this is all that I need to get the response in the right output that I want. And again, that response is a YouTube output object that has a summary that has pros and has cons. And all of that goes into a Jinja template that turns out to be rendered. And then that is something that I can go ahead and display. It's just that at the bottom over here, I have this copy to clipboard widget, uh, which is something from the Wiggly Stuff library and I can just give it the text that I'm interested in copying and pasting. And that just gets rendered uh, like this. So I can go ahead and click this and I can also just paste it. And there we go. 
we have a little markdown document that comes with front matter. It also comes with a title. There's also this little iframe over here, which is just a link to the uh, YouTube video itself. So if a person is on my blog, they can watch the same YouTube video. And yeah, I can scroll down at the bottom. You can see that there's this little summary, this one paragraph. And then down below, you can also see the pros and cons list being listed as well. So there you go. Now, before wrapping up this video, I do want to highlight that this is just one example of one app with an LLM that I've made for myself with Marimo that just helps me save some time during the day. And what I really hope is that this is a somewhat convincing demo in a sense that you might try out something like this yourself. The really neat thing here is that whenever you're building something like this in Marimo, that you have quick and easy access to an app because Marimo comes with all sorts of convenient UI elements. But whenever something goes wrong, you can always take a step back and investigate the prompt and do the fix yourself without having to shut down the app or anything like that. And it's that ability to do rapid prototyping, but also rapid iteration. That is the reason that I keep coming back to Marimo, especially when there are steps in sequential that each depend on things that happened before.